Thank you for joining with us today. I'm glad you're sharing with us today. And as I'm talking about forgiveness today, that's something that should be on the forefront of our life as Christians. But before we do that, the worship team is going to lead us into worship. So enter in before the Lord today. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Thank you, worship team. You know, today I'm going to be talking about forgiveness, and and we are always told to forgive, and yet we wonder sometimes, is it really possible to forgive all the evil that's done to us? You know, some things that are done to us are so vile or evil or hurtful or despicable, yet we're told to forgive. And we have to do this because we are our obedient kids, that we love our Father, God. He tells us to forgive. Deep down we know that it's it's wrong to harbor ill feelings towards others. But it's not easy to let people off the hook. We know we must forgive and it also helps to forget, but sometimes that's hard. How can we accept this teaching of Jesus that we must forgive? You know, today we're going to look at the story of David and Saul a little bit and to help us grasp this concept. Now, Saul was king and he had fallen out of favor completely with God. And God had found himself another king. His own heart and his own anointed by the same same guy that anointed Saul king, anointed David tough you know Saul was in intent on killing David Saul attempted to kill David by pinning him to the wall with a dart he he tried to kill him by sending him into battle with the Philistines in a pretext to gather foreskins for a dowry Saul also lied to David concerning this marriage and In fact, he gave that daughter to another man. Then Saul set David out on expedition. I mean, he then Saul set out on his own expedition to kill David. There's a lot of stuff going on here in David's life, and and at one point. Things were so bad that David had to act like a lunatic in front of the Philistines for his own survival. Imagine that. Here here David is acting like a lunatic before the Philistines. You know, the people of Goliath, the one, the giant that he slayed. All because Saul was angry and jealous of him. You know, David had the right to be angry. In fact... He was innocent. He didn't do anything. You know, if David would have retaliated against Saul, we would understand that. But that's not what David did. And I think it's important that we we look at this. You know, David never dreamed of being king. It was God who saw that David should be king, yet... David was at season, I mean, this season in his life, he was in big trouble. But how did he handle it? I think as we look at how he handled it, it'll be some things that help us to walk through forgiveness. And it'll help us to to do that. Well, the first thing, David knew and understood and respected authority. You know, he respected God. He respected Samuel. And he respected Saul. Although the Lord was with him, David knew his place. The same Samuel who anointed Saul also anointed him. The pit that Saul was in could be one day his pit. He had to be wise and clever not to plant what he did so that he did not reap it later. Because one day he would be king. David looked ahead at the promise of the future. Don't throw away your future because you feel like you must retaliate to somebody. You must pay them back for what they did to you. 
many people have paid too great a price for paying back by taking matters into their own hands. Look at the people who have hurt you. Look at them carefully. You know, one day you will be in their shoes. You know, you're in danger of doing the same thing that it's been done to you. And someone will do the exactly th same thing to you. You reap what you sow. But sometimes we have to break this vicious cycle. We have to come to the Lord and just ask him to help us to walk through this situation. That's why Jesus said, if someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. When we slap back, that's when we get in trouble. You'll never have peace when you do that. God gave us this thing for our benefit. So forgive. It may be hard, but worthwhile, especially in the long run. David knew and he understood and he respected authority. The second thing is David purposed in his heart never to raise his hand against Saul. In fact, David called Saul God's anointed. He must have known that Saul was in trouble with God. But that was between God and Saul. David didn't take advantage of this. He didn't say, well, look, I'll be his instrument. I'll be God's instrument. No, that, that's not what he said. Several times David could have easily dealt with Saul, but he didn't. See, Saul had some self-destructive behaviors, and he didn't need any help destroying himself. As we see, ta Saul totally lost it in this self-destructed mode without any help from anyone else. Saul himself did... The thing that the Lord forbid and sealed his own doom. Don't help people hurt you by destroying themselves. Don't, don't, don't get into the point where we're going we're gonna to take care of things. Recognize the fact that God is capable of handling everyone according to his will. See, the purpose of, I mean, God looks at our heart. He looks at it. We're not, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. We don't need to take people. We don't, our purpose in our heart should never be to be a stumbling block for others, especially if that person who is hurting you is in authority, even if they're men of God. You know, I think about this, you know, when, when the scripture says obey your parents, it, it doesn't say, but only, only godly parents. No, it just said obey your parents. And there's something about doing the right thing. You know, we need to do the right thing even if there's bad things going on in that person's life. We need to do the right thing. See, Saul was... He was dabbling in the occult, and but it didn't give light license to David to strike him. You know, some things are better left alone. Let God deal with things rather than you. David purposed in his heart never to touch Saul. The third thing that David did is David ran from his tormentors. Sometimes we need to step away from those who hurt us. Yes, I know that you're right now, uh, you, you're right and you've been wrong, but so was David. He fled and he went away and he waited for the Lord's deliverance. It was a great move. You know, historically, his, historically David is seen as favorably among everyone despite his the other dramas in his life everybody knows king david and i mean everybody even jesus didn't mind being called son of david what an honor there's something about fleeing and not taking things in your own hands the fourth thing is david knew and accepted the teachings about god's timing in his time, 
the Lord makes all things beautiful. He will make the situation in your life change, just like he did David. David became king. He had a legacy. Let go and let God handle it. What does this mean? Sometimes it means doing nothing. Sometimes that's hard for us not to retaliate, not to do things. Accept God's timing. The fifth thing is David trusted God had a purpose for his life and that he would fulfill it. You know, with or without your enemies, the purposes of God will be fulfilled in your life. You know, we fear that our enemy is just going to get away with it. That they'll walk away scot-free. They're not going to get what they deserve. God has the final say. Just as Saul did not get away with it, so your enemies won't get away with it either. Trust God and, and follow his principles. Trust him. That's what you've got to learn how to do. You know, the sixth thing is David really loved the Lord despite him not understanding this with the Lord. You know, sometimes we don't understand the way God does things. It's recorded during these incidents when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. David feared the Lord, and the Lord killed a man because he tried to stabilize the Ark. But David went back and re, re-strategized and did things the way they were supposed to be done. Sometimes our disobedience, things happen. And just as he finally managed to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, when you really love someone, you do what they say. You know, there may be times where, where we don't do what the Lord said. But I can tell you, David really loved the Lord. And sometimes we need to love the Lord so much that we do what he says, and he'll take care of things. The Most High the, he says he will revenge He will repay. It's not your business to know how God's going to do it. It's just you you got to trust him. The last thing is, number seven, is David did not gloat over his enemies. You know, when Saul died, David didn't throw a party and celebrate, woohoo, he's dead. No, that's not how he went. In fact, he killed the person that thought he was going to get a reward for and because he lied about killing Saul. He cursed the ground where Saul and Jonathan Jonathan had lost their life. He composed a, a, a psalm about it. He mourned them. You know, you're not supposed to celebrate when disaster falls on on your enemies. You'd better be silent if you don't know what to say and do. Don't rejoice. Don't don't rejoice over people having tragedy. David, the great king, prayed, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. That's a great prayer to, to remember when you're going through things because what goes around comes around. You know, if we look at Jesus, Jesus was weeping over Jerusalem and crying about how they did not recognize him in the day of his visitation. He warned them about what was going to happen if they didn't recognize him as Savior. And he wept about it as, he, as it was told when, when the punishment comes their way. That they should run and save their lives on the cross. He forgave them for what they they didn't know what they were doing. He forgave them. He was not happy about the coming judgment in their life. This is the attitude that we need to have even when there are people around us getting their just rewards. You know, the Bible tells us that God is not pleased with the death of the wicked. God does not celebrate the destruction of the wicked. Look at the case of Nineveh. 
you know, he was more willing to forgive and restore if repentance was present. God is not happy when suffering comes your way when you're because of your wrongdoing. He's not happy. God is merciful. He himself forgives all sin. And he's able to handle the consequences of our shortcomings. That he's able to work with us and help us to handle the things that are going on. That's why we hear about people in jail uh, coming to the Lord and experiencing and testifying the forgiveness of God's grace because there was a heart transformation. Even though they're, they're stuck in where they're at. The Lord asks us to forgive it, even as he himself has forgiven you and your many sins. He loves us enough to change us. The Lord also warns us of the impending disaster if, if we do not repent of our sins and we don't change our ways. He sees your future and your plans and that he has for you and he, he tells you in advance to abandon the the wrong ways and turn to him because he has plans for you that that will come to pass trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in his time he will make things beautiful i can tell you right now if you're if there's unforgiveness in your heart it's time to make some changes it's time to Deal with them the way David did. Not to gloat, to, to see God take care of them, but to understand that God wants them to change too, that God loves them, and God wants to break free from those things. You know, even as Christians, we have done wrong to people. We've hurt people, and we need to forgive, and we need to let go, and we need to to touch people with what he's done in us. And so today, even as we just take a moment just to pray, to ask the Lord to minister to us, to help us to forgive just as David did, to, to walk that way, I believe that you can forgive and God can change your path. Lord, I just thank you for what you do in our life and how you touch us and how you minister to us. Lord, you, you said forgiveness is something that we need to be doing. So, Father, help us to forgive. I know sometimes it's tough, but, Lord, even as we do, even as we look at David's life, Lord, we, we repent of not forgiving others, and we, we make an effort to forgive. Lord, that we don't hurt people. You know, there's been so many times that the people who who hurt tend to hurt people later. Lord, let us learn how not to hurt so that we can bring healing to those around us, to break the chain. It's time to break the cycle. And so, Father, I just ask that you would help people to break that cycle in their family, in their life of not forgiving Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in each person. It's in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. I just believe that forgiveness is something that we need to stand on. It needs to be something that we need to give so that we get. And I just encourage you, learn how to forgive and let go. That God may touch your life and minister to you. I'm so glad you joined us today. If you'd like to be part of Evangel, you can do that by, by giving your tithes and offerings, or you can even be showing up here on Sunday morning and being a part of our family. We would love for you to be a part here. You know, I encourage you to be a tither and a giver. If, you're, if you have a home church, you need to be tithing there. And I encourage you to be a tither and a giver. But if you don't have a home church and this is your church, I invite you to tithe. You can do that by three ways. You can go to our website, use PayPal, or you can use Bill Pay, or you can use the U.S. Mail. We would love to hear from you. If God's doing something in your life, share it with someone around you.